Did you know that Washington State is the second largest producer of wine in the U.S.? Let's go taste them and find out more. Hi, I'm Natalie, also known as the Liquid Muse. As a cocktail book author, blogger, and mixologist, I'm always looking for new inspiration. Welcome to Inspired Sips with the Liquid Muse. We're at Chateau Saint Michel, the founding winery in Washington State, with Bob Berto, the head winemaker. What inspired you to get into this field? Well, ironically, I was in our neighboring state of Idaho when I got my inspiration. I actually just got a job in a wine tasting room as I was going to school, getting my degree in chemistry, going to be a doctor actually, huh. and then got a job in a wine tasting room and kind of weighed the doctor versus wine thing, going, you know what, I kind of like wine. So I took my chemistry degree and my wine interest and then went down to the University of California at Davis for my, for my graduate degree in winemaking. Winemaking is a true mix of art and science. You got to have both. I've seen people that have been too heavy in either one. It's mm -hmm. got to be the right kind of balance. Absolutely. And one of the most exciting things about tasting wine with a winemaker especially is that I feel every bottle of wine has the winemaker's fingerprint mm -hmm. on it. Um, what do you think typifies some of your wines at Chateau, Chateau Saint Michel as well as Washington wines in general? I was born here in Seattle, so coming back home to Washington State was fun. And the reason I came up was because of the grapes and the new experience. So I would say Washington grapes in general tend to be uh, a, a compilation of new world and old world. When we talk about styles of wine, we have new world elements here in Washington because we are riper and we have warm climates and we get rich ripe reds. But we also, so far north, we get very, very cold at the end of the season and very, very uh, short nights and that retains our acidity and that tends to be more of an old world statement. So we really like to feel we are a mix of the new world and the old world. And then for me personally, my personal stamp, it's all about mouthfeel. To me, it's all about mm. the texture of the wine in the mouth. To recognize the varietal and to push that style in the direction of a consumer-friendly, uh, soft, uh, palate-driven wine. And you mentioned that uh, earlier to me that a lot of the grapes are actually grown in eastern Washington versus western. Why is that? Yeah, well, we're here in western Washington. Come visit us here in Woodenville, which we're only about a half hour outside Seattle. But all of our grapes for Chateau Saint-Michel are all on the east side of the state. It's about a three to four hour drive over the Cascades. You get over there and it destroys every stereotype you've ever heard about Washington State. Before, whenever I do a wine dinner, what do you think about Washington? They say rain, they say Microsoft and Starbucks and Boeing <laughs> at the same time. And all those things are in western Washington. When you go to eastern Washington, it's much more of a high desert. It looks more like Arizona or eastern Oregon than it does here in western Washington. And that's where all the grapes are grown. And that's the terroir and the site that we like to talk about. Great. Well, let's taste some of the wines and get to experience okay. the mouthfeel. Okay, let's do it. Let's start. First one I'd like to show everybody, and you particularly, is yes. our 2008 Eroica Riesling. Uh, Riesling is literally one of the founding white varietals of Washington State, and we actually make more Riesling than any winery in the entire U.S. now. Okay, And this particular wine is our joint venture with a gentleman by the name of Ernst Lohsen, who's a German winemaker from the Mosul region of Germany. So this is truly an old world, new world partnership. You see it has kind of a, a almost a wet stone yes. floral aroma. And it's in a crisp, off-dry style. One thing why we think Riesling is so popular now is that it's so food friendly. That acid mm -hmm. can really kind of cut through your food and give you that kind of mouth-watering acidity that makes mm -hmm. the food taste better. Well, and I think that a big misconception about Riesling is that it's sweet. A lot right. of Americans think that, exactly. but it's actually, they're very good, dry, crisp Rieslings like there this one. There are Rieslings all over, I mean, all over the style, from bone dry to dessert sweet. We actually mm -hmm. have a dessert wine that we're gonna taste later. Great. Um, and it is a misconception that People think Riesling, they think sweet, right. but that's a winemaking decision about where to put the amount of sugar that's left in the wine. Huh. We tend to keep ours a little bit more in the crisper, more highly acidic style that goes with the food better. And you can see that mm -hmm. there's no... Oh yeah, definitely with the acidity on the side You get that, you get that nice acidity yep. and it's dry and you can see why that would go with food so well. So if we were going to share with the, with the viewers, what would you pair this with? What kind of oh, food would be you know, wonderful? One thing why I think Riesling is so popular nowadays is that our cuisine has shifted from kind of a northern European meat and potato mm -hmm. to Pacific Rim, seafood, Thai, mm -hmm. all that Asian influence. Mm -hmm. And that kind of Asian Thai spice influence is absolutely perfect with the Riesling. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I've been to Asia, mm -hmm. I've been to Japan and Korea where I was showing them how well their cuisines went with our Rieslings and it really how opened exciting. up a lot of eyes. Next wine we have is our 2007 Cold Creek Chardonnay. Uh, Cold Creek is a single vineyard wine here in Washington State and it is truly one of the iconic vineyards of the state. If anybody talks about Washington State, 
and talks about some of the iconic vineyards. Wow. This would always be in the top two or three in terms of, uh, of, of the discussion. What a beautiful nose. So now, is this oak age? This is 100% barrel fermented. And it is oak age. It gives you get the richness and a yeah. little bit of the creaminess and a little Definitely. bit of that kind of buttery ripe. brioche. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Got a Definitely. kind of creme fresh nose. Oh, this is um, this is I love this. This you is love my this kind style. of wine. Okay, yeah, good, good. I love love love. So this. what's great about Washington is we create such different styles of this crisp fresh riesling, and mm. then you get to this rich round textured chardonnay. Oh my God, it's delicious. This is one of the oldest vineyards in Washington State, planted in the early 70s. And so this truly has a lot of, uh, of age and character, and that's why you get that, that rich, dense quality. Oh, it's very yeah. rich. Oh, this is, this is yeah, the decadence in a this glass. Is, I call this my risotto wine. When you think mm -hmm, about mm -hmm, having a, mm -hmm, like a mm -hmm, wild mm -hmm. mushroom risotto, you get that Absolutely. richness, and mm -hmm. I think this Chardonnay goes with that really, really well. That would be really beautiful. Well. Yeah. Wow. We're going on to a red wine, a Merlot. And Merlot is truly one of the benchmark varietals here in Washington State. Mm. Uh, Merlots do very well here with our um, really hot summers, and yet it cools down very quickly when you get to September, oh. and you get really kind of richer, riper, yeah. a little bit more higher acidity, and a little denser Merlot mm -hmm. than some of the ones from California. Um, this Canoe Ridge Estate wine is actually where we make all the red wine right here on the property. So this is wow. truly an, an estate-made wine right there at the, at the site at Canoe Ridge. This is a vineyard that's right on the Columbia River. And the Columbia River kind of snakes through the entire Columbia Valley mm. um, area, okay? And it tends to be very windy because you're on the river, mm -hmm. and the soils are very, very weak and sandy. So you tend to make a little bit more of a, a high-toned black cherry style. You see, yeah, it's not a big, a fleshy fruit. jammy, but it's no. a lot of bright, fresh bright fruit. Bright fruit, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Each year here at St. Michel, we do, we feature a Northwest artist, okay? Cool. And different styles of art. In the beginning, it was Chihuly, Dale Chihuly, the very famous glass artist here, okay? And we've moved on to different media, different people. This particular vintage is our 2006, and the artist is named Eva Isaacson, who actually is a um, or Norwegian, transplanted Norwegian here in the Pacific Northwest. And um, the wine is what we call a meritage. Now, a meritage mm -hmm. means in the U.S. it means uh, made of the five classic Bordeaux varietals. So this is truly wow. what I call an old world blended statement of Whoa, Washington. Whoa, and what a nose. That's so rich and, and, and layered. And This is oh. layered is a good word because we're looking for true complexity. Here you're wow. highlighting the vineyard and Merlot. Mm -hmm. With the artist series, we're highlighting um, more the craft of the blend. Yeah. And how you well, and the winemaker and really the wine, comes through exactly. here, and right? Exactly. This is the winemaker statement for the vintage. Yeah. The team makes this blend together, and we're trying to find the best blend of all the varietals and all the lots from that particular vintage. So wow. here, the vineyard needs to be the star. Here, it's about highlighting the best of the vintage and putting it in more of an old world Bordeaux style of blend. Mmm. Oh my gosh. That is really. Powerful and it's, well, fantastic. I'm making I'm making this wine for the long term too. I'm making so this wine. So it will age. This will age. Uh, you know, I. Wow. It's a funny question to ask, but somewhere in the 15 to 20 year range, mm -hmm, I, mean, mm -hmm. I think these wines can mm. age for. Oh my gosh! So what would you pair this with? This I would do. Oh, I would like a like a roast. Mm. God, like that'd a be great. Yeah, like a big old fashioned mm -hmm. roast that mom makes with some potatoes mm. and gravy and yeah, and it's rich oh. enough to handle that. Um, so Absolutely. I, I would go a little bit more old world with this one in terms yeah. of the food pairing. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And what about that dessert wine you mentioned? Uh -huh. <laughs> we almost forgot about that, didn't we? You know, I think we have some down here. Oh. What we have here is our Ethos, which is our very, very top tier at Chateau Saint-Michel, our late harvest Riesling. And we talked about Riesling being all the way from dry and fresh all the way to this unctuous dessert style. So look mm, at that, mm -hmm. just pouring it. Oh, yeah. Look how rich that it looks. It is. Huh? It's very viscous. Mm -hmm. and, mm. So this is picked <laughs> at the very end of the season, okay, mm -hmm. by very, very ripe grapes. They've mm -hmm. been somewhat what we call desiccated or dried out. So they're kind of more like dried raisins at that point. Okay. So you're pressing them out and it becomes ultra concentrated. So are you drying them on the vine? Are you taking them off and pressing them cold? How how do you... We actually, them? we leave them on the vine and there's this, there's a... Uh, um, a mold called botrytis, mm -hmm. which we call the noble rot, yes. that comes in and infects the grapes and shrivels the and grapes. And you get and that? Oh here. yeah, we get beautiful botrytis here. Wow. Matter of fact, Ernst Lowson, we make this blend together too. Ernie, as I call him, Ernst comes to our botrytis wines and he says, you've got better botrytis than we do. <laughs> so I love that. We and get isn't beautiful. it kind of rare? Isn't it is, kind it, of it's not the, rare, but to get it, the right style of dry botrytis to get this quality is rare. Cool. And we have the perfect climate here in Washington to do that. Ooh. So this would be 
at the end mm. of the meal. Wow. Get more of the kind of orange marmalade. Yep. Kind of ripe honey. Mmm. Hmm. It's rich and decadent without mm. being over the top sweet, which is why I like that. That's about right. It. That's yeah. right. It's mm -hmm. not cloying. No, it's not cloying. No, it's got enough acidity mm. to hold up the fruit. Ooh, yeah, dessert in a glass. <laughs> dessert in a glass. Yeah, people ask me to pair this with things, and I go, well, this can be dessert. You don't really need it a totally lot of things. It totally could you know? be dessert. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> wow, fantastic. So there, cheers. cheers. Finish <laughs> off our dinner and finish off the tasting. <laughs>